Hello all, Seriously is here, back for some more finishing permadeath. And I've been having some issues trying to get this thing going on. Uh, so you'll notice first things first, I'm not back on the other side of the portal. I'm all the way at my base. Ooh, look at those flying things, neat. Uh, on the frost planet in my target system. So I filmed for a bit after I got back to the target planet and I had some issues. I was finding regular ships instead of living ships. I, I didn't get a single living ship to appear. Not my first one, not any of them. Reloading, genuinely, right off the bat, didn't get a living ship, got regular ships. So, tried some stuff. I've had a couple living ships show up, but I'm getting living, I'm getting regular ships frequently, so I don't know what's going on. I don't know if this mission is a little bit buggy right now, or if I've just bugged it by going to a different star system. We'll figure some stuff out. Anyhow, the process that I went through is that I came back through the portal from the target planet where we found the graves. I dialed up the base terminus here, you know, the teleporter thing, and I came straight here. And I have not hopped in my ship. The important thing is to not hop in your ship, because as soon as you do, you're going to get this message. Oop, it's going to interrupt you give us for the invasion, blah, 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 and you have to crack the Void Egg. You want to make a manual save at a save beacon. If you're on permadeath, you only get the one save slot, so you want to make a manual slave, uh, slave, <laughs> save as soon as you come through your uh, base terminus. You don't want to hop in your ship and make an auto save because you're going to get your coordinates, basically, as soon as you hop in your ship. So you've got coordinates already. Let's head over to those. And I'm actually crossing my fingers that this is a living ship, and it's one that I like, because I'm just going to grab it right away and not actually show you guys the reload method. Uh, because I've had so many problems trying to get this to work. And if this doesn't work, I'll show you what I'm going to do instead, which is do the reload method, but instead of trying to hop back here directly, we're going to teleport up to the space station first, and go from there and find a living ship on the Frost World, instead of the Lush. Alright, that is a living ship. Wow, it looks like it has bright yellow veins. Yeah, very bright yellow. That's interesting. Oh, it is very, very naked on the bottom. Very few arms. That's unfortunate. Yeah, I don't it does have the long beak underneath that I don't mind. Or the arms at least. That uh, second thing here is a bit weird. It's like a tongue. All right, what does it look like in the daytime? Nice blue sky on this planet is one of the other reasons I picked it. Actually, that's really neat, black and yellow. Hmm. Or even like blue, sort of, right? Yeah. Well, no, it's got it's too spindly. I need some bulkier stuff down here. You know, like these things, but off of every one of these spindles instead of just two of them. There's like six open spindles down here, guy. You need... What happened? You get shot up? All right. So, it was a living ship, but I don't like it. Now, I can land and take a camera view from the ship, but if I get out of the ship, I will have made an autosave overriding my manual save, so I can't do that. I've got to go to here. I've got to reload the manual save. So this is going to send us to a new set of coordinates. We're going to hop in the ship. We're going to get the message, and it'll send us to somewhere totally different. If you remember, we got sent to the uh, right-hand side of the planet. We went up into space, and we were sent over to the far right-hand side. Uh, yeah, yeah. Nowhere near the uh, base. Con computer, nowhere near, was it the base computer? No, it's my freighter. It's nowhere near the freighter or space station, nowhere near that red icon or on the bottom or the on the top or the blue icon on the bottom. So we'll see where it sends us this time. And hopefully it'll be a living ship, because it hasn't been. Alright, I could also disconnect the communicator, but every three seconds or so it's going to just hail me again. It's really, really annoying. Okay, so yeah, we were sent somewhere over here last time, 
right? And now we're at the bottom of the planet. So this is definitely a different location. It always, well not always, eventually you'll look, go through the whole planet and you'll cycle back around to one you've been to. And that's the only way to find a specific living ship. If you found somebody's planet and you want to get there and target a planet, find a living ship in that system, that's how you have to do it. Reloading and reloading and reloading until you eventually, randomly, get sent to the same living ship that they found. But there are only so many living ships in a system, so... But in my experience, there's at least 40 or 50 of them. Yeah, look, there we go. That's just a regular hauler. I, and I cannot tell what kind of ship that is. Now, in a normal save, where you can have a manual save and an autosave, what I could do is have made my autosave like I did. We're just going to reload that anyway. I could make the manual save as soon as I got through the base turnip at that terminus. Uh, and then I could hop in my ship, fly here, land, and get out of my ship, making an autosave. And I could reload my autosave. And that um, regular ship would turn it, should turn into the living ship that is supposed to be overridden with. And then I could have examined whether I liked it or not. And if I didn't, I could reload my manual save, which was further back. But I don't get two save slots on permadeath, so the only way to do it is to do stuff like this. We're gonna go up to the space station where, of the system we're in. The space station, current system, warp there. And when we get in our ship up here, we won't get hailed right away. Hmm. In theory, I could go make an autosave on the space station. But I'm not sure if that will mess up my progress. So I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to try reloading and warping uh, from here without making an autosave. So if I need to do another save, I'm going to appear on the planet again. And I'm going to need to warp through the base terminus up to the space station again or to another planet. I can always give up on this system if I think there's something that's buggy with this system that's causing me to have regular ships appear. So you see, we didn't get hailed until we left the space station. Okay, we'll crack the egg. So I was at this stage uh, just recently. One of the problems I had was that this fleet over here gets in my way every time I'm trying to warp to the frost planet. And uh, I warped through one of the freighters and I got hailed by a frigate and it gave me the four options that were all identical and just kept scrolling, and you had no way to back out. So I had to uh, alt F4 on the game. Yeah, yeah. It's been harrowing to get this to work, and I don't know why it is giving me regular ships. So far, even though I've had a regular ship spawn, if I have gone to the space station and gotten to the frost planet with a fallen host target like this my first try has been a living ship but I've only had it happen once so we'll see what happens here that's a living ship all right it looks like it might be red Ooh, yeah okay that is interesting that's very interesting. It's a hammerhead, which I'm not too keen on, but that is a bright red. And it's a hammerhead without the fin on top, which is the kind that I find acceptable. It's like an old uh, ironclad from like the original naval days with ships that weren't made of wood, I guess. <laughs> it's a little bit naked on the side. It's got a couple empty spindles. But you know what? That's really bright red. Let's. Let's see what the sky, uh, the daylight colors are. Oh, heck yeah, that's really neat. Oh, with, oh okay, those what these webs here are always going to reflect like the background sky. Uh, you'll see them turn yellow or pink or whatever kind of space we're in, I guess. But yeah, I like that overall. Very pinky, dark gray colors. 
and basically black for the you know what I'm just gonna take it uh, I don't think I have a hammerhead ship on any of my other saves yet so this is fine for me it's got uh, the triple engine I prefer that over the single but uh, that that's one of the most minor points on this for me uh, the little mohawk thing here I like <laughs> that's pretty cool and I like the underneath part here the two layer like the mohawk goes above and this thing comes out underneath with that nice V pattern yeah let's land and let's take this so that's basically the gist uh, you want to reload as many times as it takes and uh, if you have to you can go to another star system and try there so that's basically all it takes you you come through the portal and don't get in your ship you want to take a base terminus to anywhere else uh, you can go to a space station or another base you've already set up and you want to drop down a, man a save beacon and make a manual save then you can hop in your ship and start looking for living ships but every time you reload you're gonna have to use the base terminus to travel anywhere and not be able to hop in your ship and when you finally find one you like you go like this you begin the biogenesis you give up your pieces one part at a time so you've got the heart the neural stem the heart and shell and the uh, singularity core Oh yeah, and the uh, souls that we found. <laughs> and we brought those souls back to life. Welcome back to life, souls. Alright, mission complete. All done, the living ship mission. And there's our new ship. Imprint upon the host. Get in. S-Class, as they all are. Uh, hyperdrive range is, wow. I believe that's near the maximum. I thought it was actually 165.1, so maybe it's 166.1 is the maximum. Hmm. Anyway, I'll look that up, but at 165, not bad for a living ship. Yeah, look at that. That is definitely black and red. This is the true color screen of your ship. If you ever want to know what color your ship is in regular, pure white light, this is what it looks like. Nice. Yeah, I'm really liking that. I'm really liking that. Let's grab this thing. So I guess what I got going on is a red themed save. All of my ships are uh, red and black or red and gray. Or just red as the other fighter is. But yeah, alright. Looks like red's the theme. Maybe we'll have to change our, uh, our outfit colors. Maybe that's what we can do with the rest of the save, since uh, I'm not going to be reloading for half an hour straight. Hmm. Yeah, all right. All right, we've got the ship. Uh, we've got a freighter. I think it's in this system. Yeah, there it is, right over there. Let's head over to the space station. Or our freighter, whichever we're targeted on. <laughs> and uh, let's change our outfit a bit. I think I like what I'm wearing, basically, but maybe we can change the colors a bit to match the theme of our save. Not that we have a theme per se. In fact, our freighter is nice gray colors right now, so maybe we can work that in. If we don't want to go out with a full red save. I know my other primitive save has a very red motif because it found a naturally red freighter and a naturally red uh, exotic ship. So, And also I kept the radiant pillar on that save, which is also a red and gray theme. So that's already a red save, so maybe I want to go with the gray on this save. Let's see what we can do. Let's get rid of that blue. Hmm, I do like gold, though. That gold looks nice, but let's see. All right, head we're going to leave the same. We can keep those colors for the face. Chompers is chompers, I guess. All right, so torso. All right, that's blue. So if we make that... Oh, that's not a bad red. 
That is not a bad red. Maybe we'll make that the only red and everything else will be gray or black. Let's try that. That's actually darker than I expected it to get. All right, okay. Uh, oh, that'll be armor, that's how I changed the color of that. Now what is this, yellow? That'll be the side patch, okay. Let's make that. Silver, I guess. That's a bit too light. There we go, that's good enough. Gloves, we'll do similar stuff to black. Red hand. Oh, that's better, yeah. Three little red buttons, that's nice. Okay, legs, uh, let's see. I think the armor is, yeah, the armor is one of the colors. All right, let's make those black and the legs black. Yeah, there's already some red in the legs with that red leather straps going on. Okay. Boots. Yep, that's a nice deep black. Okay, I like that. That I might want to change. Mm, is that just the uh, tip? All right. That doesn't look too bad with bright red there. But it's this one that I think I want to be... Yeah, that's what we'll go with. That looks okay. Now we're going to the armor. Let's change that. Oh, uh, there we go. Try red there. No. Nope. Mm, it's pretty pink. Okay, that's not too bad. Looks like a plate of iron, though. Like uh, somebody. You know what? It looks like Marty McFly took the. Uh, piece of the fireplace off and put it under his shirt, or over his shirt in this case. Let's try... Oh, that's better. Yeah, that's a lot better. That's more metallic for sure. Okay. The only thing left is the backpack. I think that's the only thing left. We'll do a double check. Oh, that's a shame. Part of those gloves stays white anyway, eh? Alright. Alright. Well, we'll deal with that. Blue. We will make that... All right, that's not too bad. What do we got going on for color? What's color? Oh, I see. There we go. Yep, that works for me. So if we go back to this, we can go and save this as number two. Now we've got two saved. Yeah, yeah, we want to leave like that. Yeah, that's not too bad. Be nice to have a more oh, you know what you know what I didn't do I made those leg plates the same black color that I was mocking the uh, breastplate let's change those real quick although it does look better on the leg plates that's really interesting hmm. Hmm. ah that looks okay too all right let's save it yes I want to overwrite the save yes I want to keep the changes little bit of a convoluted system we got going on for the image modifier, but I've figured it out, I think. <laughs> Alright, so now we have three ships, but only one of them is basically functional. Let's head over to the freighter. Take a quick peek in the cargo bay. Where are, where are you, freighter? Oh, you're behind us. There you are. Wait, that's not my freighter. That's just a freighter. Where's my freighter? Maybe it's not here. Well, it will be soon. Check this out. Oh, I can't summon it there. Eh? All right, well, let's move a little bit, and then we'll summon the freighter. Big, whiny freighter babies. I could have sworn I saw this thing, though. Alright, well, 
How many nanites do I have? A decent chunk. All right, I'm not afraid to go spend a little bit more on the color. And maybe we'll add a splash of color to this freighter. Because I think I've only purchased uh, the black color so far, which lets us color it gray. And the stripe is naturally white, so I haven't had to change that to keep it the white color. Oh, but if I change it off of white, I'll need to purchase white to get it back to white. Well, I can make it light gray. That'll be close enough. <laughs> uh, purchase upgrades, I believe, is where I want to be. And I don't have enough. For that. We got to work on this. Definitely got to do some work on that. Yeah, black's the only one I've purchased. Let's buy red. Back out of there. Go back in. And customize the appearance. So I want to change the secondary color to dark red. Nope. Nope, wrong, bad. Okay, I'm gonna back out. No, I don't want to apply changes. Okay, apparently it's not the secondary color I want to change. It is the accent color. No? There we go, that's the one I wanted to change. Uh, yeah, but it might look better if I go black. Yeah, that's a much better gray for that color. I really wish I could change the bridge color. Uh, I, that would be nice if they could fix that for us. That's on my wish list. Because apparently, you know, this one... Oh, that one changes stuff, right? This one changes nothing? Yeah, nothing's changing. Well, I'm going to leave it on red because I would like it to match this color red. And I don't know... If click on paint if that does anything but I will save the changes there we go now we have a themed save sort of not really <laughs> I guess that means I have to look for red starships from here on in that's okay that red is one of my favorite colors especially mixed with a little bit of black I like the burgundies and the dark reds yeah this thing looks great it it looks like a uh, smoker's lung right in my cargo bay. Look at that. <laughs> Definitely looks like a some sort of telltale heart or something, right? Like an organ. That's pretty cool. That's my that's maybe one of my best living ships. Neat. I'm happy with that. Ah, uh, I could go put red starship trails on this. I have the quicksilver for that. That's tempting. Oh, that's interesting that I still have a cracking void egg. I shouldn't have that, should I? That might mess stuff up. So you know what? I'm going to get rid of that right now. That's bad. Yeah, I shouldn't have that. Everything should be gone already. So let's hop into this thing. Take a peek. Actually, you know what we can do? But let's go into uh, first person mode and take an even closer peek. Yeah, that is a really cool cockpit. Bright red, dark black. Yeah, I like that a lot. Super Geigery. Nice, nice stuff. I am liking this ship quite a bit. Uh, Radiant I can't, Hive, Hivevol? Hivevol. Hmm. Yeah, but let's take, oh, it's not a V. Hi evil. <laughs> oh, it looks better in my cargo bay than it looks in the true light, but still, it looks pretty cool here too. All right. So all of these ships. Oh wow, that's a nice layout. Very accessible. I'm liking that a lot. Now a lot of these layout they're random. Uh, the layouts you get per living ship, and some of them aren't the best for your, getting your technology to to line up the best. It's going to take forever uh, to f pulse fish for the upgrades to this thing, but I am going to do it. I'll probably show a little bit of that on screen, but that's not something we're going to do today or tomorrow. We're going to continue on 
with regular sort of upgrading. Uh, I really want to get manufacturing centers. Keep keep going on that. So I think that's my plan. It's manufacturing centers. Uh, this is the other ship. The Iowarit. And yeah, I don't want to be in first person mode for that. But we can take a look at the uh, color here. Wow, I've never gotten my ship to spin all the way around before. What did I do there? I gotta get a new mouse wheel. That's what I was told is the problem here, but this is a fairly recent mouse. It's not out of shape. Anyway, that's the colors of this one. Also red and gray. And I've got nothing, nothing in here at all. I've upgraded a couple slots here just because it only came with four and I wanted to move everything over so I could use it to move between galaxies, which we had done. But now we gotta upgrade it and that one and buy a hauler. If it's a hauler I decide I want. I mean, I do like the look of a lot of haulers and the red ones can look really nice too. Um, my first, one of my first ships that I bought on my first save was a red winged hauler with the fan wings. It looks really cool. One of my favorite ships. What are we at here? We are at about 25, 26 minutes. Okay. Yeah, all right. What else can we do today? Could do a little bit of inventory management, but I should take care of that off screen. You know what we could do? We could hop somewhere new. Let's do that. Let's, let's go to a new system. Find a new place to be around here, because we have a, uh, a lush world here, and it's nice. But uh, let's find something else. What else is in the neighborhood, right? Do I have any fuel? Do I have to refuel? Oh, I've got fuel. Okay, great. So uh, you can see I've been elsewhere by warping several planets up here, but let's head in a different direction because I haven't found anything I like up there, really. So we're here. Okay. Let's head this direction. <laughs> there we go. We're going to this place. I think there was only three planets. See how fast I found that? That was ridiculous. I've never in my life found a three-star Viking system that quickly before. More planets would have been better. Pretty sure it was a yellow star. More planets only helps to actually find lushes. We don't really care that there's more or less planets since there doesn't seem to be a such thing as one planet systems anymore. I've heard tale, I've heard rumor of such things, but I've yet to see one. All right, we got a tropical planet. What do we have as a moon? Is that a moon? Or is that a planet? Oh, come on. How did I miss that? Come on, scanner. Recharge, recharge, recharge. There we go. <laughs> Stellar corruption. I think that's a planet. What else we got? Yeah, I think it's just the three. Hmm. All right, well, that's a shame, but uh, we have one uh, planet to check out. Corrosive, okay. And a stellar corruption could be very nice. A stellar corruption can be basically a lush planet with a chromatic filter. This looks like it has yellow or orange grass with a green sky. Let's see what it, we get when we hop in atmosphere. I don't think it was listed as a paradise planet. Oh, that was a really cool geographic formation. It's going to try to pop me up above it, isn't it? I like that it's giving us trees, actual trees. Sorry, tree. <laughs> yeah, it's not too bad. Yellow is not my favorite color, but it goes okay with the green. It's almost like uh, lemon lime. Although it's more like lemon mint. <laughs> now, is there any water on this planet? Wow, there are some really cool geographic formations here. Oh my 
God, a freighter crash in the middle of one of these things? That's really cool. Uh, let's angle myself so I can actually take off when I land. Nope, come on. All right, well, let's take off the other direction then. Yeah, you know what? That's, that's like a Autobots base or something. This is pretty cool. Not gonna lie. Attempt to just drop a base right here. What's the weather like? That a mild rain. Mm. All right. Well, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. I'm definitely gonna mark this location. Uh, can I? No, not general portable. There it is. Oh, I have none on me. I'm gonna have to uh, make some metal. I can't make metal. Is there anywhere to get metal? Oh, there's lots of places to get metal. There we go. All right, quickly drop down a beacon. And maybe I'll head off to that uh, cell of corruption. Fair dust, okay. That geode will get me everything I need for sure. Wherever I went, there we go. Okay, so metal plating. Two of them. And I'm gonna mark this. Well, I guess I'm not playing. Uh, blue and white anymore. We'll mark that gray and red. <laughs> okay. Bonk, bonk, bonk. Wow. Almost just crashed the ship. <laughs> Almost. Totally just crashed the ship. It's a good thing that ships don't take that much damage from crashing, especially when they're upgraded this well. Quick gander at that other button. Oh, come on. Atmosphere, what did I ever do to you? <laughs> That's the stellar corruption. Maybe we'll have a really cool chromatic effect here and no bad weather. That'd be awesome. We got ammonia and magnetized ferrite. That's neat. And even if there's no chromatic effect, I can see... Oh, is that a weird red color sky? Hmm. Well, that would be unfortunate. Well, we definitely have storms. Or, or the planet is just always like this. There's definitely a chromatic effect going on. <laughs> it actually makes that red sky work. This is really cool. Yeah, I'm liking this. Cool. I should check the weather here, though. <laughs> Let's land real quick, like. I'm still looking for some aggressive uh, predators as well. I haven't seen any of them in a while. Yeah, you know what? Because of the chromatic effect, uh, corrupted blood. It's not red. That's a good sign. Uh, because the chromatic effect fades away when it's close to you on foot, it's not that bad here. It gets really pink as it gets far away from you, but that's not that bad. Cool. All right. Well, until next time, everybody. Have a good time.